Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is uh, theCUBE's Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We're live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge 2015. This is day one wrap up of two days of wall to wall coverage. The Cube here at IBM. This is our fourth year with Edge. We've been on the ground. We've been, we've been embedded in documenting the history of IBM's change, the transformation. Certainly, the Edge show's changing. I'm John Furrier. My, my co host, Stu Miniman. Dave Vellante has stepped away for a meeting. Uh, Stu, uh, Edge is all the rage now. It was a storage show. Storage now under Jamie, Jamie Thomas is now much broader, more integrated into the organization. We're hearing things like IBM Z, mainframe, IBM Power Systems, big data. This is a different conversation than previous Edges. What's your take? Why? Is it the converged? Is it big data, scale out? What's all the buzz? What's the story here? What's your take as the analyst covering the space? What's going on here at IBM Edge from your perspective? Yeah, so, so John, we talk about the cube. There's the big mega trends out there like cloud and big data analytics and open source really transforming infrastructure. And you would think that a storage, mainframe, and power show, uh, you know, there's so, some out there that would say that, that these trends are leaving that behind. But really, I came out of today is, you know, IBM's is really recommitted, you know, that, that not like they ever left commitment uh, for these areas, but, you know, you want Docker? Like, let's run a Z13, you know, mainframe, with Z Linux and put you know Docker on top of it. You want to talk open? There's the Open Power uh, Foundation here. It's got over 200 partners in there. They're working with OpenStack. They're working with a lot of these big trends and of course analytics. Huge play for IBM and starting to see how things like the storage platform portfolio and, and the rest of this uh, you know segment here fit into this trend. So I, I tell you, I'm impressed. I I think I took my eye off it for a little bit, looked back, and I'm like, wow, it's a it's really a new story that ties in with all the big trends that we. We've been talking about. Yeah, I had lunch with Eric Herzog, former EMC, former executive violin memory networks at IBM. He's in, you know, doing a lot of the go to market on the storage side. It's very clear, Stu, that storage is shifting into much more of a, a strategic unification role within the company. Obviously, you got to store data somewhere, and data being stored is now opening up new roads that are being paved. Internet of Things, the persona on mobile devices. I interviewed the mayor of Memphis, talking about the big grant with Twitter data. You're talking about uses of data, and the aspect of storage are now interrelated. This was a brilliant move, and Jamie Thomas, who I love interviewing because she's such a pro, she's really amazing, she's brilliant, she's beautiful, and she's articulate, but she said, this is what we're doing, we're being more strategic in the aspect of storage, and you can see that, and the conversations aren't about storage, speeds and feeds, certainly flash is a, is, is a key thing, XIV and, and whatnot, the, some of the legacy stuff, certainly relevant, good traction, but not the transformative game changing. So I got to ask you, transformative, moving the ball down the field, what is the key thing here for IBM? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we've said for a bunch of years, you know, when will the sleeping giant that is IBM, you know, rise in the storage world, John? And I'm not sure if IBM's ever going to say, you know, we want to be the leader in storage. But what they've got is, you know, it's a, it's a big company. with 400,000 people now, uh, they, you know, really solid in uh, the analytics, the whole smarter planet, smarter cities, something we saw really well today. You talked to the, the guys from Memphis, talking to customers using the Z in power. I mean, Walmart, you know, you, you, you know talk about a global scale retailer uh, that really loved how, you know, Linux and Z Linux and uh, want to see ZOS uh, be a technology that they can put uh, into their global IT force. One of the favorite sound bites I heard on theCUBE, wasn't actually on camera, was before camera, was um, I won't say the person's name for the sake of their <laughs> the career, but we were talking about our EMC coverage last week, and, like, um, and we were talking about pure storage and how pure is may not hit the escape velocity in terms of the valuation and whatnot. And uh, the comment was, yeah, Pure is trying to be like EMC. And <laughs> the comment was, I'm not sure EMC wants to be like EMC. And so that speaks to the shift in the vendor landscape where the smart money is moving to a different ball game. What's your take on that and what is the new ball game? 
Yes, yeah, so, so John, we, we've been talking a lot this year about how it's really going beyond products and going into platforms, uh, you know, open APIs and ecosystems, uh, you know, how these solutions can really fit together, and that really plays into IBM's strengths. I mean, IBM, you know, has had, you know, huge partner ecosystems for years. Uh, one of the, the uh, interviews that we did today talked about really the ISVs that are working on power. I think it was 2,000, it was, no, it was 1,200, uh, you know, partners out there. I mean, you know, IBM knows how to pull together large number of partners Partners, how to weave through, uh, you know, the, you know how they play together, uh, understand those business models. I mean, the first time I heard the word coopetition, it was linked to IBM. So IBM has long been one uh, that knows how to, you know, move things forward over 100 years of innovation, uh, and you know, IBM knows how to keep up with the times uh, and be relevant uh, when it comes to these big trends. Yeah, we had Rosamilion, we had Jamie Thomas, we had Ken King. Um, we had a lot of great people from the trenches. Stephanie Chiris. Yeah. Doug Baylog here towards the Doug end. Doug Baylog towards the end. We had Walmart on, expert, who basically said we reduced our costs from five to one ratio, going with the Z systems, the ZIOS, custom software in the cloud with ZOS, five to one ratio down in cost, zero failures. Active, active, amazing stat, and the, the cost advantage of the other solution, was failing. So like, <laughs> had a failed solution that cost five times more than what the Z did. So I think the notion of having power servers is really a big deal. And then the on the, on the lighter notes, do we interview the mayor, uh, AC, we had the mayor from uh, Memphis, uh, AC uh, Wharton Jr. Uh, with uh, Jen Crozier, Vice President of Global Citizenship Initiatives, where they won the Smarter City Grant. So again, this is the, this is the new way. This is not about the speeds and feeds, it's about the outcomes. So just, you know, interesting take on all Yeah, this. so John, uh, th this morning uh, before you came, we actually had the other keynote speaker uh, talking about energy and a real, you know, great, you know, smart sensors, internet of things, said that the company, uh, their, their power distribution, not a power generator, for 120 years, the company remained unchanged. And then the last 15 years, just, you know, radical change the way they do their business and technology powered by IBM is what's driving that change. If you go back to the tape, beautiful thing about the cube is you can go back and look at the earlier footage. Um, you'll see them that we said years ago, four years ago, IBM has to get storage in the mainstream, in the epicenter of the action, use the system's knowledge and advantage, and use software as an enabling opportunity to disrupt the transformative markets while floating up the existing markets that have traction. They're doing that, Stu, and I got to say, it's an impressive strategy, it's a shift, and they're configuring it from a consumption model that's consistent with cloud. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by that, but I want to get your analyst analyst take on a letter grade. A, B, C, D, I mean, what would you give them? Yeah, so, so John, in true analyst mode, you know, I got another day left here, John, so I really want to dig in so because, <laughs> you know, when we talk about, you know, what's real in hybrid cloud, what's going on with things like hyperconvergence, we're going to have Eric Herzog tomorrow, I know we talked to him a little bit at Interconnect about hyperconverge, but, uh, you, you know, when I looked at, I, at EMC, you know, EMC's got to play, at least one play in every, and they check the box. There's a couple areas I want to hear some more from IBM, so uh, I, I, I'd say today, you know, Good solid B. I think you know I, I like what IBM's doing about pulling these th these threads together. Uh, this shows now six thousand people, and it feels like six thousand, um, but it, it's very different. I, you know, I know people that went to the IBM mainframe shows for years. You know, fanatical people that go to that uh, reminds me of like the supercomputing shows. Uh, it, it's a little bit nichey, uh, but it, it's customers that you know like what's going on. Um, and IBM pulls together some of these different pe disparate pieces. Uh, some of the shows, it's kind of like you've got you know one corner. Of over here, one corner there. Think of like Oracle Open World. It's like you know the Java people. We shove them up in the Hilton because they don't want to interact with everybody else. This is you know a, a nice cohesive show, um, and I, I like what IBM's doing there. So uh, you Dude, know, let me give good you my great so let far. me give you my take on this. So being following IBM going back to the 80s, I got to tell you that's interesting. Old words were, were were become bad words, and then they come back to being good words again. I'll give you a few of them. Um, data processing, that's an old you know term that went south, went away. People talk about pipelining data, data processing. That's an you know old IT term. Um, Glasshouse, not sure that's back. Big iron is a term that used to be referred to the mainframe. Big iron. We had Walmart saying, "Hey, you know what? It runs Linux. I get developers on there. 
I don't. I want big iron. I want big freaking servers. Yeah, the, the Walmart guy actually said, "Come on, it's really just a big server. I mean, it's a big box, it's a big server, but boy, can I do it." Have you ever heard a customer saying, "I want less compute"? <laughs> no, I mean that's the whole point. Is what cloud brings is infinite scalability. Well, so, 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 John, one of the big points is, you know, how does IBM and everybody stay up with what's going on with Moore's law? So, you know, getting I, off of some of the x86, pushing with power, pushing with software. Yeah, here's what my take. Think? Here's my take. So, we said on the cube, the threading is a big deal. Threads make software run great in, in a distributed computing environment. So I think the software enablement game changing equation will start to emerge and you'll see breakthroughs. I think that having the kind of power and the big iron, the big servers, and the ability to construct apps horizontally and vertically uh, with, in a seamless way with choice is a good, good consumption. But more importantly, with the threads, with the cores, software opportunity will be big. And I think you're going to start to see things that you wouldn't have seen before, whether it's Internet of Things, whether it's you know, EMS in the city of Memphis using data and now bringing data, multiple data sets in, in real time, I think you'll see a lot of innovation and efficiency. So to me, I think it's all going to come down to software and we've always been saying that on theCUBE. So um, anything else too for wrapping up day one? No, I think John, you know, it, it, real good here, you know, so, such, you know, th we always say, the tough thing about the cube sometimes, it's the context switching. Uh, so there's so many different pieces here, a lot of areas to dig into. I mean, it's meaty content. So, you know, this is not high level business stuff. Uh, some of the shows go a little bit more business focused. This is, you know, in the weeds, you know, get the geek stuff done. Uh, and, you know, kudos to IBM for, for bringing that out. Okay, that's a wrap from day one. This is theCUBE, live in Las Vegas. We are on the ground covering live, all the live action IBM Edge. Again, fourth year in a row. Um, great story, Got coming together, unifying and growing and scaling, great stuff. This is theCUBE, wrapping up day one. Stay tuned and stay tuned for tomorrow for another full day of coverage here on SiliconANGLE.TV. We'll be right back tomorrow. Stay with us.